Dear students, fellows and friends of the Max Planck schools, first of all, thank you for the inspiring video. It's really a shame that I'm probably already too old for an application to one of your schools. Otherwise, I'd be on board. Well, welcome also from my side to the third Max Planck Schools Day. And of course, a warm welcome especially to our new students. We are incredibly happy that you have chosen us. We know that you all could have started at other top graduate schools. Thank you for taking this important step in your career with us. Personally, I always look forward to this event in particular. The Max Planck Schools was a central idea that I took with me from my desk drawer at the Max Planck Institute for Eisenforschung in Düsseldorf to put it on the table in Munich when I took office as president in 2014. It was the one idea I was really determined to implement. Why? Well, the German science system is a symbiotic one. The universities and the non-university research organizations complement each other in their functions. They support each other, both at the local level, on the campus, but also on the regional and national level. But I was always convinced there's more we can do. At the moment, we are the sum of our parts. But as we all know, you can be more than the sum of your parts. And that is usually a really good thing we would, should try to achieve. The Max Planck schools are designed to overcome institutional and regional boundaries in order to create a new quality of graduate education. And in particular, by giving students insight into different fields, different approaches. Interdisciplinarity is rightly on many people's lips these days, but offering it at a consistently excellent level is something that can really only be achieved through a network of labs. And the result of the first interim evaluation has shown it really works. I would like to say to all those who participate in the pilot phase, either as fellows or as students or as organizers or coordinators, that I really admire and I'm grateful that you embarked on our experiment with so much enthusiasm and courage. Now at the moment, I'm no longer active as a scientist, as you know. Instead of this, I am responsible for the management of science, in particular in the Max Planck Society. But I still remember very well the time of my career, which you are in right now. But let me start from the beginning. I grew up in the countryside, in a small town at the Mosel River, a very beautiful river in Western Germany. If you don't know it yet, go there for a visit. The scenery is breathtaking. And by the way, also the wine can be described by my favorite word, it's really excellent. I had a wonderful childhood. We were, we were very free because in those days, parents often let their kids just do their own thing. Unfortunately, when I was 12 years old, I got a very heavy attack of what we call in Germany Gelbsucht. I think in English it's jaundice. And I had to stay at home in my bed for nearly one year. So I'm kind of an early adapter in these days of homeschooling. Anyway, I discovered a really great book on modern biology during these otherwise absolutely boring days. It was a great time of molecular biology. And I was fascinated to read the first time in my life on things like DNA, RNA, and many, many things more. That really struck me. But I also realized at that time that in order to understand molecular biology, you have to understand chemistry first, which in fact I had no idea about at the age of 12. And so I started to also read chemistry textbooks and to set up my own little chemistry lab in the attic of my parents' house. That, by the way, looked a bit like all the cliche photos you sometimes see as cover photos on travel guides about Germany. 
a really old half-timbered romantic house. Thanks God, I never blew it up in my experiments. Based on these experiences, I decided to study chemistry, at the beginning as a door opener for modern biochemistry. Later, I have to admit, I got far more interested in physical chemistry, probably as this discipline is far more predictable than biochemistry has been at that time. I loved my time at the University of Bochum, where I also met my later wife, and where we both did our diploma thesis looking at the mobility of defects in solid materials with NMR techniques. But I missed the bigger picture in these studies. More or less, we were looking out for materials which were accessible for the RMR technique. And so it was more the technology which defines the subject of research and not a broader scientific question. I still believe the scientific question, the science question, should define the tools to be used and not vice versa. That was a time when I decided to look out for a PhD position at one of our leading Max Planck Institutes. This was in summer 1979, and this was the moment when I saw a Max Planck Institute from inside for the very first time, together with my wife. We had the firm intention to start our PhD together at the same place, dual career in the truest sense of the word. In fact, we had two alternatives in the field of solid state physics and chemistry, the Max Planck Institute for Festkörperforschung and the Max Planck Institute for Eisenforschung. One event I still remember quite well. We were just returning from a large international conference on solid state research in Canterbury. And the next day we wanted to apply for two PhD positions the Max Planck Institute, at the Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research in Stuttgart. We spent the night in the guest house of the Institute and the evening was impressive for us as young students of a German university. We met again to our surprise all those outstanding scientists whom we just admired the day before as keynote or plenary speakers at that very conference. Apparently, they took the opportunity to, to fly quickly over from England to Stuttgart, obviously an institute worth visiting. And the next day brought yet another surprise visit. The director to whom we had sent our applications spontaneously took us to a coffee round in the late morning, where the whole institute met regularly. The internationality of the staff, the lively scientific exchange, the spontaneous integration of even very young people like us, all this made a deep, deep impression on me and my wife. You could feel that you found yourself at a place of high performance, but at the same time, the atmosphere was relaxed, informal and motivating. Internationality, diversity in professional and personal backgrounds, all this characterizes good places for science. Last week, you could see this very nicely when Ben Liszt celebrated his Nobel Prize at the Max Planck Institute for Co-Research. I don't know if you saw the picture, but I think you all know this kind of atmosphere I'm talking about. And of course, I hope you experience it at our schools in particular. Well, to return to my story, in the end, me and my wife decided not to start our PhDs in Stuttgart, but at the Max Planck Institute for Steel Research in Düsseldorf. At that time, surface science was at the forefront of material science. In particular, in the field of corrosion science, where very few angstroms of oxides decide on the material stability in sometimes rather ugly media and atmospheres. Combining very fundamental scientific questions with, really, with a real practical importance that I, found, that I found really fascinating, and by this I found access to the topic that would eventually become my specialization, corrosion science. Looking back, I would say that the PhD years belong to the happiest years of my life 
as an active researcher. First, I was given the freedom to look out for my own topic in the broad field of corrosion science. And so it was my really very own thesis, which I worked upon for the couple of next, for the next years um, uh, in Düsseldorf. At first, I read a lot on corrosion science and electrochemistry in general. Then I decided to investigate a very general, but not at all understood process. The simple rusting of iron under outdoor wet dry cycling conditions. I was interested in vanishing thin, thin electrolyte layers on top of the metal surface. And I did not care if all the others were interested in the subject. I found it worth studying. Second, I could use all the tools available at the Institute to study these complex reactions involved in rusting of iron. For example, I wanted to use magnetic techniques to quantify the amount of metallic iron in a rusty sample. And I found a top group in Düsseldorf focusing on magnetism. Or I wanted to use Mesbauer spectroscopy to quantify the amount of different oxides in the rusty scale. And I found a top group on Mesbauer spectroscopy again in Düsseldorf. My message from this is Look around yourself in your institute to complement your studies. But don't be surprised if at the beginning the others don't jump on your ideas immediately. This was the same for me. I had to convince my colleagues scientifically from the importance of my questions and I had to take their comments seriously. And don't give up if others tell you that things would not work out. Reflect on their message, but then think twice how to overcome the problem which has been pointed out to you. So, to be a good scientist, you have at first to be convinced yourself of the topic of your work. You have to be good enough to overcome problems and concerns of others. You have to work hard to get things done. But in the end, there is great satisfaction. You can prove to others and your supervisor that your ideas made it in the end. Despite all the showstoppers that others told you are lying in your way. By the way, back then me and my wife also had a lot of pressure because we were having our first kid at the same time. But somehow we were never worried about the future. We just try to enjoy the time. On the one hand, maybe that was a little bit the zeitgeist of my generation, the first post-war generation in Germany. It could really for us only go up and forward. On the other hand, I think that a certain nuance of easiness, especially being not too obsessive with one's own failures, can be a success factor. At the moment, as I said, I'm no longer active as a scientist, but do the management of science. Is everyday life in such a position more relaxed? Well, I can tell you, probably not. Forward-looking and inspiring science management and strategic decisions are part of my daily life. That's really fun. But oftentimes, you will, have, you will find yourself managing problems, some bigger, some smaller. And here too, things sometimes lie as they lie. If things do not turn out, out as we'd like them to turn out, also we tried our best, well, then my attitude is, let's get up, move on, stay confident, don't let doubts eat away you at all. There is another point that I would like to share with you from my experience as president. One of the real highlights of my job is interviewing potential new Max Planck directors. It's an insane privilege because I get the opportunity to talk to the best people and they all come from very different disciplines. And you know what I've noticed over the years? There is no such thing as the typical kind of successful scientist. I've met such diverse personalities. I can't identify a pattern. This is really wonderful news. And it may also mean 
that I should stop talking about my passion and perspectives on things at this point. Follow your intuition. Go about things the way they feel right for you. Try yourself out a bit. See where your strengths and weaknesses are. Experiment and then take the path that feels most natural for you. And if that should be a trail across fields that does not seem interrelated at the first sight, congratulations, all the better. And always remind yourself, if you've made, if you've made it as a young researcher in one of our schools, this can really give you confidence. You can really be inspired by yourself. Now, I wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you and to see you which directions and see you also which directions you will strive. Thank you very much.